and uh, welcome to this HPL primer. Uh, my name is Victor Petrick, and I am a senior software engineer at HDB. So we'll pick up uh, kind of uh, where Elvis has uh, left off, uh, but we'll dive into more details about HPL. And the best way to do it is by trying out to build something with it. So we'll uh, go uh, and try to model uh, something familiar, like the Netflix clone we already used in a previous example. And to keep things simple, we'll ignore all the complexities that come with uh, setting up uh, user accounts and profiles and such, and we'll concentrate instead on the movie library aspect of our Netflix clone. So where do we start? Well, we're going to need some movies uh, with titles and maybe release here. And uh, here's a type. Uh, type movie, it has a required title property and an optional uh, release here property. So far so good, um, but we're going to need more and uh, movies have directors. So we'll represent that with a new type and uh, uh, define a relationship like so. There's a new type person now and there is a link director from the movie to the person. It's a single link. So there can only be one director per movie. Um, but movies also have actors. So we also add uh, a multi-link actors to the same uh, type person, representing uh, the fact that every movie can actually have multiple actors associated with it. Well, um, there is some other information that could be useful. Uh, actors have actors play characters, and it would be really neat if we could uh, store the character names somewhere. And uh, there is a way to do so. Uh, we can enrich the actor relationship by adding a link property to it. And this is basically a property that's directly on the link, and we'll call it character name. And this will uh, this will encapsulate uh, the information of basically the triplet of who played in which movie what character. Now, um, this is going to be a big, uh, big uh, Netflix loan with a big uh, library of stuff to see. And there is going to be more than just movies. There's going to be shows with episodes and such. So to represent these shows, we're going to need uh, another type similar to a movie with a lot of uh, same, a lot of the same things like title and actors. But uh, maybe we don't have a release here because it's not quite as clearly defined for a show, and director is also not as clearly defined. On the other hand, we will have a number of episodes specified, so the show will look something like this. Well, that looks like a lot of copy pasting, and that's not exactly ideal in most programming settings. Uh, we want to avoid copy pasting as much as possible, usually, and we can do so uh, in, uh, in HTTP by uh, using a mixin type. And we factor out all the common links and properties into this mixin abstract type content. We make our movie and show extend content. And now movie and show only need to contain the links and properties that are specifically unique to them and without any duplication. So what else? Um, we, we, we have this release here a number of episodes and um, we just selected in 32 to represent them, which uh, it's okay, but it has negative values, which is not ideal for our case. And maybe we would like to restrict that. Uh, we can add constraints to our schema to make sure that uh, completely unreasonable values uh, don't get uh, entered into our database for release year and number of episodes. And we have a built-in, uh, we have a number of built-in constraints. We're going to use the min value constraint specifically here uh, to generously give uh, the minimum value of 1900 for the release year. We're pretty sure nothing earlier than that, and even that is very generous. Uh, will appear in our movie library. And for the shows, uh, the number of episodes, 
uh, will be kept at two. Well, now that we've set up the schema, we can actually get to querying. Um, what should we start with? Um, we have uh, we have a Netflix clone, so we're going to have some kind of a movie page with all the information about the movie. So let's build up that query. Well, if we just select a movie, we get a bunch of uh, objects with just IDs in them. And if you remember, actually, this is a good time to mention that uh, we didn't have to specify the, uh, the fact that the objects have ID property. That gets included by default into every object. Uh, they will all have unique IDs uh, for us to use. Well, that's all nice, and uh, that's all nice, but uh, we actually need a lot more data to make it usable. So we add what we call a shape. Inside these curly braces, uh, we write the fields that we want to fetch. And uh, this may look actually similar to GraphQL, and uh, it, it, it works in a very similar way. So here we added some properties that we're now fetching. Uh, going forward, uh, we can actually nest these shapes uh, inside each other. So in addition to the uh, to the movie shape, we, inside of it, we can add the director link and call, uh, add the name, name to its shape and actors and add their names too. Um, but there was something else we actually had. Uh, we had the character names for the actors, and that would be also nice uh, bit of information to include in this query. But the character names were not uh, a property of the actors themselves. They were the property of the link. So there is special syntax for that. Uh, we use the at symbol to indicate to HDB that uh, this property is actually a link property rather than a property of the object. Now, finally, we added a filter because this is going to be a page for a specific movie. And uh, so we just select uh, filter movie by title here. Um, notice that filter is using movie.title, uh, and we call that expression a path. Uh, basically, any dot separated uh, uh, expression is, is a path. It starts with some object. It follows a bunch of links and properties to get to the uh, final uh, set of values that it needs to consider. And the thing about the path is that this movie here is actually referring to the movie we're selecting. So we're saying select a movie with a whole bunch of stuff in it and use the movie title uh, in the filter. Now, there is a shorthand for this because uh, quite often uh, we end up referring to the thing we're selecting. And the shorthand is just start a path with a dot. What that means is that uh, the path starts wherever the scope of uh, this expression is. So this expression appears in the scope of uh, selecting a movie. So movie is the scope and dot title becomes movie dot title internally. Well, now that we have a nice query for our movie page, uh, we can tweak it to provide a different kind of query uh, to maybe um, use in suggestions. So it looks pretty similar. Uh, there is our title release here in director. Uh, we, uh, we drop the actors uh, uh, subshape here. And the filter is different now because uh, instead of selecting a specific single movie, we are instead uh, getting suggestions based on the actor, uh, the actor who played in the movie. So uh, you can also see that uh, we're using the abbreviated path here as well. So this dot actors dot name refers still to the movie dot actors dot name. Now, of course, uh, since this is going to be uh, used in our uh, suggestion widget, we don't want to overwhelm it by uh, uh, giving all possible results. Instead, we're going to order them 
uh, by release here to keep the most recent ones on top and just select the top five using the order by and limit clauses. However, there was another thing that that query didn't do. It was uh, only selecting movies, but we actually have movies and shows in our database. So instead, we're going to use this polymorphic query selecting content, which is the abstract base type, both movies and shows extend. And inside of it, we'll specify different uh, properties and links that it should uh, include depending on whether this content is show and then it should include number of episodes or is a movie and then should include the release year and the director. So the query stays uh, largely the same, but now uh, this polymorphic query can uh, extract uniformly uh, all this information regarding shows and movies based on, uh, on an actor that uh, start there. Well, we probably want an actor page as well, or at least some kind of uh, way of displaying some actor information. But the actors only have one property in our schema. Um, so wouldn't that be a bit of a problem? Well, we can include any arbitrary computed information in our uh, return shape. And to do so, we use uh, this defined as symbol, also known as the walrus uh, operator. Uh, it's a colon with an equals. And uh, for our example here, we just use a, a built-in function uh, to split the, uh, the actor's name uh, into the individual components as just a showcase of uh, how to use uh, these arbitrary computed expressions. However, these uh, expressions are in fact arbitrary, so let's compute something else that's maybe a bit more useful, uh, like the number of movies uh, that uh, this particular actor has starred in, uh, in our library. So we do a movies count, uh, and uh, we again use a built-in count uh, function, and a subgrade. This is fairly simple and uh, reasonably intuitive subquery, although uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, we're selecting movies where the actors, uh, whether it's this person that we're selecting uh, among the actors. So the person in the subquery is actually the same person object as we're selecting. And this is all fine, it works, uh, but this is a bit bulky. Um, there's actually a better way of doing this. Any time that we, what, what we seem to want to do here is we seem to uh, want to use the actor's relationship. And instead of uh, going in the usual direction from movie to the person, we want to uh, trace it backwards. And to do that, we have backlinks. So uh, we use the special symbol for the backlink. It's instead of a dot, it's a dot with a back arrow, which says follow the actor's link backwards. And then uh, we also add this is movie construct there. And uh, we've already, we're already familiar with it from the, our polymorphic queries. And uh, the uh, overall, this will get us from the person we're starting at, following the actor's link back to the movies that refer to them, and uh, get us all those movies, which we can now count. Well, that backlink stuff is actually quite useful, and wouldn't it be nice to add it to a schema? Well, we actually can. We can define this computed link in movies directly in the schema, so that we don't have to retype the backlink syntax all over again. Let's, um, let's add three of the most recent uh, movies that uh, the actor appeared in in, uh, in our data, because just saying how many is, is probably less interesting than uh, showing the recent features. Uh, recent so again, we start with a query that should be familiar 
uh, we're fetching the person's name and movie count. And in the count now, we're just using the computed link we defined in schema instead of the backlink explicitly. And to add the three recent movies, we follow this computed link in movies. We fetch their title and release here. And then after this shape, we order this entire thing. We order it by release here uh, in descending order and select the top three again. This gets us uh, our uh, actor uh, information, uh, including uh, the number of movies uh, they start in, as well as the latest three features. Of course, um, HPL is not limited to uh, selecting data. We can also insert, update, and delete stuff. And uh, here's a little teaser for a nested insert. Uh, it uses uh, the defined as or the walrus operator to uh, insert the data, uh, except that unlike in the selection queries, uh, of course, all the links and properties mentioned here must actually exist on the object into which they're being inserted. Um, the fact that it uses the same uh, expression as as the computed uh, computed expressions uh, suggests that actually any valid HPL expression can appear on the other side of this uh, operator, and indeed uh, for director here we include a subquery that inserts uh, a new person record. Uh, we could have instead used the subqueries that selects uh, an existing record or anything else as long as it. Uh, produces a person at the end that we can assign as a director. So like this, we have a nested insert which creates two objects and uh, links them together. Well, this concludes the primer. And uh, really, there is so much more to HPL than uh, that has been presented here. And I hope this has piqued your interest enough for you to actually go and uh, try us out, read the docs, and discover uh, all the power of HPL that is available. Thank you.